Good morning and welcome to Morocco. I'm Caroline and I'm traveling around this gorgeous country for a couple of weeks with my other half Andy and also 11 newfound friends as yesterday we joined onto an intrepid tour. This morning we're going to be checking out of this absolutely gorgeous guest house that's completely family run and I think really it's more of their family home and we're just staying in their guest rooms. We're fully expecting to on foot be making our way back out onto the main road but a little bit like yesterday I think some mules are going to be taking our luggage down to the main road because there are no roads that come up to this guest house. We'll hop in a few grand taxis and it's going to take us down to Volubilis which is an ancient Roman city and we'll spend the morning exploring that with a guide. We'll then hop in some more grand taxis that will take us to the city of Meknes where we'll have the afternoon to explore. We'll then take a one hour public train across to the city of Fez and tonight that is where we're going to be sleeping. You're famous little cat. Founded in 3 BC, Volubilis was once a thriving Roman city and served as the capital of the province of Mauritania Tingitana. It's the UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its cultural and historical importance. It's strategically located near the western coast of North Africa, making it an important trade hub allowing it to prosper during the Roman era. The city features well-preserved ruins of Roman architecture, including temples, grand villas and triumphal arches, these were built in big Roman cities where more than 15,000 people existed. I was particularly taken by how well preserved the main administrative building known as the Basilica was, used as a court of justice and parliamentary by the Romans and then later a place of worship by Christians. Another standout feature was the exquisite mosaic artwork. I've been fortunate enough to visit several Roman and Greek sites and museums in Europe and the Middle East. One thing that's clear is that people from these times love their erotic artwork. In my experience, Europe has celebrated this, from the brothel that showcases the original artwork in Pompeii and not to mention the phalluses that act as arrows dotted around the site pointing in its direction, through to the statues. For me, the most notable of this pair housed in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. About a decade ago, I took a school group here and overheard one of the teenagers say, the reason why the woman is smiling is because she stole his you-know-what. I laughed so much and almost 10 years on it stuck with me. But in contrast, several of the mosaics around Volubilis have mosaic tiles missing. On the surface you might not think very much with it being an ancient site until you realise that the parts of the pictures that are missing are all the erotic artwork. Officially, it was the Lisbon earthquake that destroyed these parts of the mosaics, as though the earthquake had some special mission to complete. Let me know what your thoughts are on why those parts are missing. We've finished up at Volubilis and we've hopped back into the Grand Taxis. It's going to be about a 45 minute drive through the gorgeous countryside to the city of Meknes. We've entered into the old city of Meknes. This is in fact a fortified and walled city, originally built so that the people inside could be kept safe, but also as we've just gone and learned, it's so that the people inside could be taxed a little bit more accurately. Therefore, in order to get on the inside of this walled part, you have to go through one of the many gates. And the one that we've come through is the one that opened up into the old Jewish quarter. There's a lot of building work that's going on at the moment, but we could still see the gorgeous intricacies of all of the tiling around it. The next part of the city that we've come along to is Casper. This behind us was used as a granary to be able to store food, but it wasn't everyday use food. It was for in times of things like drought, and also if there was a pandemic such as like COVID-19 that we've all been going through, they would then turn to the granary behind us in order to be able to feed the people of the city of Meknes. We were not expecting this, but the Le Grand Taxis that we've had since this morning when leaving Moulay Address have ended up coming around with us and at the moment it's unseasonably hot and so instead of us having to wander all around Meknes ourselves, we're just getting driven from A to B to C. They stop, they wait for us and then we're hopping back in the car. This is like luxury.
The gate behind me is yet another one that again is unfortunately under construction, but you could just see peeking out right at the very side, some more gorgeous, intricate tiling. But what was really awesome is that directly underneath those tiles is a column which came from Volubilis where we were this morning. I feel like this is gonna be one of these cities where I'm gonna to want to come back in a few years time when all of this restoration and building works is all complete. Our guide was just explaining that this square here is really similar to the Gemma El Fanat, which is the main square in Marrakesh where you have things like snake charmers and storytellers. And there's lots of shops around the side selling all of the traditional Moroccan goods. But as you can probably see, it's under a lot of construction at the moment. And he was saying that the people who used to come here and sell their goods whilst on an afternoon they do try every now and again coming here and setting up shop the police will move them along and say it's not time yet we asked did they set up shop anywhere else and he said yeah down the road but because it's not really as famous as this square business wise it's just not doing very well but he said as soon as the restoration here is ended it will go back to how it was but obviously just a little bit more shiny and a little bit more improved Next, we popped into the Dar Chamai Museum, once home to the Chamai family. It has a sumptuous Arab-style garden featuring fountains and fruit trees. The Dar boasts intricately carved wood, some of which is superbly painted and detailed tiles or zlij, all oozing with luxury, a sign that the family who once lived here were very wealthy. Within the house were also displays showing traditional costumes, musical instruments, and other traditional crafts. We're just following our guide through the paths that feel like a real labyrinth through the Medina. Because it's Friday, it's their religious day, so most of the shops tend to be shut. And so it's got this very eerie vibe to it, but I'm loving the fact that there is a wooden roof. So it's completely shielding us from the sun. And you might also just be able to hear the faint call to prayer because it's coming up to lunchtime. So we've been told that we're going for lunch next. And I'm guessing this is the restaurant, but if I had to put money on it, I think it's probably a family home and we're going to go and eat some food with them. This is awesome. Salam oh, alaikum. Vegeta. Ah, shukran. Shukran. So we are having camel burger. I've not tried it yet. How is it? You just duck straight inside. It's good. <laughs> what does it taste like? Camel? <laughs> Beef. Oh no, that doesn't bode well. It's like a meatball. Mm. Like a meatball um, burger. This is Devon, by the way. <laughs> Just because people are going to be like, who's this random person on the camera suddenly? No, We finished up with lunch. I absolutely love that camel burger. For me personally, I thought it tasted a little bit more like lamb as opposed to beef. Because for me with beef, it's just this overwhelming taste of iron and metal, whereas I really enjoy eating lamb. Finished the entire burger. We're now just walking back through the Medina in the direction of the train station because up next, we're gonna get a one hour train along to Fez. I had it wrong, it turns out that instead of walking to the train station, those grand taxis that have been very carefully looking after our luggage for the last few hours came and picked us up. Once again, we're going to the train station in style. Okay, so the train is one, delayed, just like yesterday, but two, has also completely overshot us and three if it's anything like yesterday i'm fully expecting that this is going to be a bit of a nightmare again i think people are going to be in our seats and we're going to have to somehow get them out and yesterday that corridor was absolutely heaving all of those people all of that luggage here we go again let's see what it's like today <laughs> We've got our own cabin and it turns out we're actually in first class because there's only six people in a berth instead of eight like it was yesterday. From what I can gather, I 
think that this train is pretty much the same design as the one that we took to get from Marrakesh up to Casablanca. So if you're really into your trains and you'd like to have a little train tour to see what's on offer on here, I will put a link in the corner to that particular video. So I think we have had so much fun or just sat chatting, having a bit of a laugh and we've actually just come into Fez and our tour guide's like, come on guys. And I'm guessing that's probably what this announcement is, but first class in these compartments, absolutely lovely. All of the luggage was able to fit up top so we could close the door. The air conditioning was working so much better than yesterday in second class where we had to have a suitcase propping open the door. I guess I need to wrap this up because otherwise I'm gonna miss my stop. <laughs> So in our compartment on the table, there is just like an envelope. We were trying to work out if maybe someone's just gone and left it on the train in the hope that someone will pick it up who's going to Fez and might deliver it to the address on the envelope. We have no idea what the etiquette is here. We're out the front of the Gare du Fez and our guide Hamid has ended up doing some pretty serious negotiating with some taxi drivers. I can't tell what he was saying, but you could just tell how heated it was from those bodily language. I think he's managed to negotiate a price that he must be happy with and we're all getting split up into, I'm guessing, small grand taxis. had it wrong it turns out that we're actually getting le petit taxi our driver was just explaining that if we're just going as far as the medina you want to be in the le petit taxis and he was explaining that when you go further afield that's when you have the grand taxis and it would make an awful lot of sense because we were using those grand taxis in the last destination to get all the way out to mole idris which was a good 45 minutes out into the countryside the other thing that i'm picking up on is we're back having red petit taxis because at meknes there were turquoise Rabat they were blue and in Marrakesh if memory serves me correct I think that they were yellow this is the new city beautiful. new city yeah. Yeah. Mm. first two city new city old city oh, you're in the wrong lane <laughs> I love that wrong lane <laughs> thumbs up <laughs> oh mine <laughs> shukran yeah. 